This is actually the first time I'm speaking publicly about it, but I said, I request a most benevolent outcome for surrendering to the waves of the cosmic ocean. Thank you. And instantaneously, I had an answer. We are actually witnessing the beginning of the golden age of Earth, a long period of peaceful and prosperous. Every single person on the planet will be biased in service to others. I'm absolutely 100% certain it's coming. Unfortunately, the turmoil will happen first. Are there any details of that that you could share with people? Well, yes. I am here today with Chris Harrison. I was so excited when he reached out because you are the exact type of guest that I love to interview. You have an incredible story, an amazing message. And you're obviously so sincere and so articulate at telling your story. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I would love to have you start by sharing the story of your spontaneous kundalini awakening. Okay. Yeah, great. Love to. It happened about three years ago. And this is actually the first time I'm speaking publicly about it. I was told when it happened, it was so wonderful and magical. I told lots of people, but often people would sort of look at me with a blank stare when I got to Kundalini because they'd have no idea what I was trying to tell them. But yet three years ago, it happened. And then it's been, there was the event itself. And then that triggered a whole series of changes inside my body, like feeling energetic pathways opening up and things that have, that has continued. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have characterized myself as a very spiritual person before this happened. There was religion when I grew up, but I kind of rejected it years ago for various reasons and kind of went most of my life without any sort of spiritual work that I did. And it wasn't until I started asking, asking myself the questions of who am I and why am I here? You know, those sort of deep spiritual questions that everybody asks at some point. One day I was, I was sitting in, I wasn't even meditating. I was sitting in contemplation and I was contemplating different dimensions and about how we incarnate and how if we incarnate, we often will have a, a purpose, a reason for being here. And so sort of with that in mind, I made a decision. Then I made a statement to, the, to whoever or whatever was listening that if I had incarnated for a reason, I wanted to fulfill it. I wanted to do what I came here to do. But of course, we get here, we, we come in with amnesia. We don't remember. So with that thought in mind, I just said out loud to the universe. And it, there's always, it's, I say it sounds kind of flaky, what I said. I don't even know why I said it the way I did. But I said, I request a most benevolent outcome for surrendering to the waves of the cosmic ocean. Thank you. And instantaneously, I had an answer inside my body. It, the first thing that happened was, it was almost like my entire body took a breath. If you can imagine the, what it feels like when you have clogged sinuses and your sinuses suddenly open up, it was, it was kind of like that, but throughout my body. And that was just very brief. And then there was a, I could feel something rising inside me and it, if you can imagine a glass of water filling itself up, it, it was like that. And so it was just this something that was rising slowly upward inside me. And so I could feel the, the level of it. I could feel it through my, my body as it went up. And I, I wasn't frightened, you know, while it was happening, because it was very interesting. And it, there was nothing, it didn't feel good, it felt good. And so I just, I allowed it to occur. Somehow, I, mean, I don't even know when I sort of came across the information. I knew intuitively that this was my kundalini activating. Somewhere I had read enough about a kundalini awakening or something that I recognized, oh, this is what's going on. And so I just let it occur. As it rose up, it, was, it felt like it was dislodging emotion from my, at a cellular level. And it, as it got past my chest and started going into my throat, that's when the emotional release came. And at first it was just tears of joy. 
of, because it just, it was so, you know, this, it, it was so incredible what was happening. And the tears of joy transitioned into giggling. So I went from sort of weeping and joy to a full on giggle fest. And again, which is, it was just odd. I mean, wonderful and magical. Um, and that sort of died down and, and sort of settled. And I thought it was kind of done. And I'm kind of, I, this whole time, I'm just, I'm sitting as still as I can. My, my eyes are open. I'm, I'm just sort of staring out into space. And it, and it sort of settled, but then deep belly laughter started building up. And it built up really slowly, which was, again, it was incredibly odd because there's nothing that's funny that's happening. I, there's, I'm not thinking about anything funny. There's nothing in my environment that would be stimulating, causing this. And it sort of gradually built. And it was so odd that I actually started kind of trying to resist it. And it, I was kind of clenching my jaw to like prevent myself from laughing out loud. And just for a brief instant, I detached from my body, went totally limp and relaxed so that my jaw relaxed and then I laughed until I cried. And, you know, that was when it, it also activated my crown chakra, my third eye. So those were just completely lit up. I was in a state of a, a blissful state for a couple of weeks after that. It was profound on, on, on several levels all at once. The first thing that went through my mind when all this happened was like, holy crap, my guides are listening. Like I actually, like they're actually here. They're actually listening to me. It was such an immediate response and answer to it. So, so that was sort of on, on one, the confirmation of that, just the, the awakening of the chakras and what was going on inside me was again, another level of like, oh, wow, this, there are parts of myself that I didn't know I had. There are dimensions of myself that are awakening that I was not aware of. And then the sort of the third thing was leading up to this, I had been reading new age sort of things and stuff about how there's a shift in consciousness happening on the planet that people will describe as going from a 3D to 5D and, and that we're all rising in vibration and stuff like that. As I would read that stuff and they would... A lot of people will say that, well, when it happens, we're going to change physically, that the physical change is, is part of the shift. And again, when I would read that stuff, it'd be like, oh, okay, that, that sounds nice. I'm, I'm all for all that stuff. And then when this happened, it's like, oh, wow, like this is, there is a physical component that's happening. And it's the, it's a confirmation inside my body of the shift that is going on worldwide. The planet is rising in vibration. Everyone on the planet is rising in vibration, whether they know it or not, or whether they're resisting it or not. As we rise in vibration, you know, we polarize, which of course we're seeing enormously on the world right now. We, we polarize between service to self or service to others. And it's becoming more and more obvious who is aligned with service to self versus service to others. So all of those things, right, just in the few minutes that it took for this Kundalini thing to actually happen, all of those realizations happened within me. And then I thought that, okay, well, that's interesting. That's nice that this has happened. What does this mean, right? Why is this happening to me? And I also did not expect that it was, that it would continue in the way that it has in the changes that that I'm experiencing the it, it's they started out relatively slowly i would call them activations when these things would happen and the first one sometimes they would happen when i would be meditating and sometimes often they would happen um as i was falling asleep so in a very relaxed state often they would be aligned with uh, a full moon or some other astrological event I, I, I pay way more attention to that stuff now than I used to. So the, the first one that happened, I was falling asleep. And suddenly, if, if you can imagine a, a, a ticklish needle, you know, about two inches or so, and it was going straight in the very top of my head, down about an inch or two into my brain. And crazy, crazy, crazy ticklish. Not painful, but like 
very decisive in where it was. Like it was in a very precise place and it lasted for, oh, I don't know, five minutes or something like that. And it's impossible to fall asleep while it was happening, as you can imagine. Very freaky. And then, I don't know, two weeks later, same thing, but this time just above my third eye, going in sort of in a diagonal, same sensation of sort of like a thin ticklish needle. There was other times where on my temples, similar things would happen. There have been, there was an episodes of sort of like pulses of energy going up the back of my neck into the base of my brain. So they would sort of go kind of one, two, three, four, and then into my brain, one, two, three, four, into my brain. Times where the base of my brain would just light up like a sparkler. And so very freaky, very magical at the same time. But I also was, as it's going on, I'm just trying to find answers to it, right? Like, what is this and what's, and what's happening? I guess they went on for about a year and a half or something before they sort of at that pace where it'd be every couple of weeks or something like that where something would happen. And then it was about a year ago, it all kicked into overdrive where I was having, going from something once every couple of weeks to every day. And, and sometime in there too, I started the, the sort of one of the main things that I continue to experience is it feels like a soft, thick, cool liquid that pours in and drips down my crown. And it feels like it coats my entire head sometimes. There are times where it feels like it's like it's dripping from the back of my brain onto my spine and then dripping sort of down, down my body. That sort of will happen fairly regularly in, in meditation. Sometimes it, it feels like there's a hose connected to my temple. It's just pouring in and it feels just exquisite. I'll try to touch on a couple other sort of physical changes because th this is the sort of thing, like when it first happened to me, like I'm not unique, right? Like this can happen to anyone. Anybody can activate their Kundalini if they wanted to try to. It's not that I'm special in any way. It's just for some reason, I'm call it on the outer edge of the bell curve. And so I'm expecting more and more people to experience things like this, if not exactly this, you know, where they go through a Kundalini awakening. In that period where it started happening sort of every day, over a period of six weeks, my entire spine and rib cage loosened. And I don't even know how else to describe that. It, it would, there would be episodes where if you can imagine a miniature power washer on one of your vertebra. And so I would, I'd be sitting in meditation and I would have one of my vertebra and it would feel like having your teeth cleaned, like, like a little power washer kind of working on one of my bones in my spine. And then it would clear. And then I would feel sort of the, the rush of this, whatever it is sort of flowing. After a while, I sort of finally put two and two together and realized that these are the, when I'm feeling these sort of buzzings and tinglings, it's pathways opening up and being realigned of whatever theoric layer of myself that this is. I mean, so that kind of stuff, again, it's, it, I've normalized it all now. Like things that, you know, th two, three years ago were like extremely like, oh my God, what just happened there? Now it's, oh yeah, whatever. Like five minutes before this started, my third eye and crown just went crazy. <laughs> so it's... I, I don't know what that meant, but it does that sometimes. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your experience. I have so many questions for you. Yes. Um, I wanted to start by pointing out a similarity with the laughter that you experienced. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with charismatic Christianity at all, but they... No. So... There's like fundamentalist Christianity that's a lot more strict and like um, intellectual based, more focused on beliefs and right actions and things like that. But then there's this other branch of charismatic Christianity that's a lot more focused on having a, a relationship with what they call the Holy Spirit. 
and having spiritual experiences. And so something that happens a lot in these churches is what they call baptism in the spirit and that where they believe that the Holy Spirit is like coming in and filling their body and they have all of these manifestations. One of them is the laughter. They call it holy laughter. And wow. so that I immediately thought of that when I heard your story. It's like the same thing happening across different belief systems. It's really cool. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's just people, same experiences, people using different words to describe mm -hmm. them. It's like, as I now know, and I didn't know four or five years ago, everything is conscious. And that consciousness is of a single being, right? Every mm -hmm. single one of us is literally a piece of source, a piece of creator. The, the illusion that we are separate is an illusion. And yeah, I mean, it's interesting you, you say that because it's sometimes I'll say that I'll describe the, the sort of stuff flowing in at the beginning, the rising up. It was like more of my soul flowed into my body. Wow. It's because, again, our, our souls are not singular. Our souls are a soup, for lack of a better description. After all of this and just trying to soak up as much as I can about what is happening to me and what's going on in the world, how important it is for everyone to find their own inner divinity. Everybody literally has built-in divine guidance. You know, you just have to learn how to uh, know that it's there and learn how to connect with it and to communicate with it. But that's amazing about the laughter, the the charismatic. Yeah, and my husband, I don't think that you would mind me sharing this, but he had an experience when he was young where he went to, I think it was a youth group and everybody in the room got hit with holy laughter. And he said he just like was brought to his knees and was just like this laughter was coming up out of him completely out of his control. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was, uh, yeah. Unbelievable. That's amazing. That's amazing. And he had it as a group. There was yeah. a group of them? Yeah. And he was like in his early 20s or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Energy is, it's all, we're all connected. So that makes sense to me that it could be in a, a group sort of thing like that, that right. all would happen. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I'd love to talk a little bit more about your experience. So after you had the initial kundalini awakening, you started having these activations, which is something that I think is really common, especially in the Eastern paths when people are doing yoga and breath work mm -hmm. specifically to stimulate the kundalini. They talk about how there's this long process that they have to go through. The initial awakening happens, and then it could be years and years of spiritual discipline before they reach the state of consciousness where they're fully awakened. So when this started happening to you and you started feeling these needles going in at different points on your body, did you know what was happening or what did you think was going on at that point? I mean, I knew it was tied to the kundalini, especially the stuff that was going on in my brain. I figured that those were just neural pathways that were being reopened, re reactivated. And yeah, and it's definitely... It's definitely a process, you know, not only the, the physical stuff, but also, you know, I kind of describe it as my higher self is very gradually, but also insistently realigning me and my life and everything like habits that are changing, eating habits and all kinds of stuff. Like I did not exercise between the ages of 20 and 54. And now for the last three years, I've been practicing martial arts. Amazing. Almost daily. Wow. Yeah. Again, it's not like the, the changes I made with diet and things like that. It wasn't like I sat down and said, okay, I'm going to change my diet. It's just very gradually I made different choices. And those choices were healthier and better. I bake all of my own bread now. I, I never would have predicted that several years ago. And even stuff like the the exercise that I do now it's been a very sort of gradual, if you were to, if I were to chart it on a graph, how it was, it would be just, a, it'd be a very gentle sort of curve in how much effort I'm doing to sort of get myself in shape, if that makes sense. It wasn't like I suddenly went, okay, I'm going to work out every day for an hour a day. It just sort of worked its way into my life. And, you know, without a lot of effort just became sort of natural for me to do. 
the same thing with the eating habits and, and things. And in many ways, with what's going on the planet, that everybody rising in, in vibration, everyone is really kind of being brought into balance. You could, in many ways, whether they're allowing it or resisting it is another, is another thing. But, you know, when the Kundalini activated, because I was already, even before the Kundalini activated, I had about two or three years before, several years before that, I had sort of embarked on, I described it as I was resetting my inner compass. I worked a very demanding job, my personal life. I had been a caregiver for someone until she passed away a few years ago. And so it was a, a very stressful, very busy life. And so I had already sort of begun some inner work that, that ultimately led to the Kundalini thing. But I mean, I didn't imagine at all that it was going to, where it was going to lead. Thank you for sharing that. That was going to be my next question is to ask if you had noticed any changes in yourself since going through this process. So you mentioned like different habits and lifestyle factors working their way into your life. Have you noticed a change in your nervous system or your like state of consciousness at all? Oh, yeah. That's like my my anxiety is noticeably lower. I've, I spend enormous amounts of time meditating now. Just my general outlook on things is much, is much healthier, I'll just say. And, and I've been very, very conscious that of, of the shift that I'm going through, that it is a rising in, 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 in consciousness. It's a, it's, yeah, I mean, and all levels, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of those things are being brought into balance for me, kind of. It's like I'm, again, it's like I've merged more with my higher self and my higher self is doing more guiding, let, let's just say. Does that, does that answer it? Yeah, absolutely. So what does it feel like to merge with your higher self? I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, right? Because it's not so much like, a, like with the Kundalini, this felt like a switch was flipped and this stuff happened. You know, but the other changes are are gradual, right? And so, I mean, I, I think one of the main things about, you know, sort of how I feel is the perspective that I have now about you know, why, why I'm incarnated, why we are the big questions, why we're even here, and having a perspective on that I simply didn't have before, that we're all eternal beings and that our souls will incarnate again and again in in different ways in different dimensions for the purpose of learning and expanding and understanding ourselves through incarnations you know it's kind of the know thyself you think of as the physical self and your life and all that kind of stuff you know and then there's the know thyself as the pre-incarnate self the soul you and going and having experience after experience after experience for the purpose of the experience. Somewhere along the line in there, I also started having Akashic readings. Yes, which, I was going to ask you about that. Yes, which have been incredibly informative. They're really fantastic. I work with a woman named Krista Rauschenberg, who's mm -hmm. awesome. And if, if anybody watching doesn't know what your Akashic record is, it is the record of all of your soul's experiences here and, and on other planets and other dimensions. It is in your DNA. Apparently, anyone can, you can learn to enter your own. It's very difficult to do. I've tried to do it and have not been successful. But there are people who have that gift. And in essence, you give them permission to enter your Akashic record. And then they act as an, an interpreter so you can have a conversation more directly with your guides. And so that was actually one of, the, one of the first things I did after I had the Kundalini awakening. A few months after that, I thought, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one of these things. And it, it was, you know, the information that came through told me immediately that it was legitimate, what was said and how it was said. It was actually very interesting. Like the, in between the first one and the second one, so after the first one, I'd, I'd had my Kundalini activation, but in between th that one and the second one, I, I started having those things I called activations. And so I, I hadn't 
told Chris, I, I hadn't told Krista that they had been going on. And almost the first thing she said when she connected to me was, oh, wow, you've gotten upgrades. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so I was able to find out that these things that are activating within me are happening because they're essentially spiritual gifts that I had awakened in previous lifetimes that I'm able to awaken here now. This is the fifth time I've been on an ascending planet. Apparently I do this. I come and I come and help to add my vibration to the planet and to uh, bring in knowledge like this and share it. So you learned about your previous history working with ascending planets in your Akashic readings? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you learn any details about the other planets that you were a part of or no? Not much. There was one was destroyed. There was one that I'd been on that 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 was destroyed, and a lot of people perished. I only sort of wanted to kind of a curiosity of in general, had I had lots of lives on Earth or not, and you know that kind of stuff. Hmm. So you've been around and visited other places. Yes. That's very interesting. Did you learn anything else during your Akashic readings? Oh, they're hugely helpful for me, mm -hmm. although. What I often do with them is I will give her names of people in, in my life to find out if I've had previous lives with them, if there is any sort of karmic leftover stuff, what is the purpose of the, the relationship and stuff like that. And that's been, you know, extremely helpful for me. But there, there are lots of things that you can, you know, uh, explore with, a, with an Akashic reading. You can go down all kinds of rabbit holes. I mean, the reason I'm even on this talking to you right now was that in the last one I did, which was about a month ago, my, my guides were very specific. They said it was time for me to come out of hiding. And they said time is now that I needed to be more open about my experiences. And so that I could introduce more people to my writing, which people can find at purposeofthesoul.com where there's a, I hesitate to call it a book. It's a free download. It's a very short book and some other writings about my understandings about why we're here and, and the, again, the, the purpose of incarnation and why we're here on the planet, the shift that is going on right now, you know, why there's so much turbulence and where we're going, you know, because while it is very turbulent right now, and I have no doubt it will become more turbulent, we are actually witnessing the beginning of what will become the golden age of Earth of a long period of without wars and peaceful and prosperous. We're experiencing enormous paradigm shifts right now, away from competition for survival to cooperation for survival. And if not cooperation, then coexistence, where as people know in their own way more and more the oneness of all things and that we are all one, one entity, one being. The more you know that, the harder it is to get into conflict. You know, it, is, it becomes unthinkable to go to war. You know, it's such a turbulent time right now because it's, as the vibration goes up, we, as we polarize, the service to self people, let's just say, are, while they are in the minority, they are noisier. So there are more service to others biased people than service to self. The light has won. There is not enough darkness to quash the light. It is, we, were, we are now experiencing how it unfolds and influencing how it unfolds. Because each, each one of us, simply by sitting in quiet contemplation and visualizing in your own way the, the beautiful world that you want to live in the future, simply doing that helps make that possible. It is, and it's, it's why it's so important for people to understand or to have the, you know, understanding of, of uh, again, of the oneness of all things, but that they are literally a piece of it, that they are a piece of source, God, creator, whatever word they want to use. Because when you can align with that perspective, even amongst the turmoil, you will see hope. Because I see an amazing future for Earth. I see just an incredible future. There is a time in the future, and it's not that far away, where everyone will be biased 
in service to others, where every single person on the planet will be biased that way. When that happens, we will we'll solve the problems that need solving. And it, it may look kind of impossible from the way things look right now, but I'm absolutely 100% certain it's coming. Just unfortunately, the turmoil will happen first. Right. So does that mean that the people who are leaning service to self right now will all be transformed and awakened? No, not everyone will be. And it's not like we go through as a soul, we go through densities of consciousness as we sort of rise through our experiences. You know, we start off in first density elementals and things like that. It's some you know, we graduate to second density, which is plants, insects, animals, that kind of thing. And then in these forms, the human type forms or or advanced animal forms where we get self-awareness, in these incarnations we're veiled. And we're not veiled in other incarnations, or at least not to the same degree. And so here with a veil, without a bias, that's where we choose our our polarity, positive or negative. And but the ones that are not ready to awaken to a service to self-orientation, they will, they eventually will. It's just they won't incarnate again on Earth. They will incarnate on a on another planet of a third density veiled existence, if you will. And then in this planet is transitioning to a fourth density positive polarity planet. And so so I mean hopefully most people who are sort of undecided, you know, more and more of those will will wake up. But the ones that don't, again, they'll when they transition off the planet, they simply won't incarnate here again. Would I be correct in assuming that you're familiar with law of one? Yes. Yes, because all the language with densities and service to self and service to others, I learned from law of one as well. Yes. Yeah, the, the discovery of the law of one material and certain channelers was one of those. It's one of the sources of information that I was, like I said, I was a sponge for this kind of stuff. And so, yeah, the law of one, various channelers, listening to people's near-death experiences, or the work of Dolores Cannon, who did the hypnosis work and past life regressions. All of that stuff is just remarkably consistent. It really is. And so the combination of all that stuff combined with what I'm experiencing physically is just such a wonderful confirmation for me about that all the stuff that I read about is like, yes, this is all happening. And I wish it would happen faster. Me too. Uh, <laughs> so I spend more and more time meditating and doing what I can to lift the vibration for the whole planet. It's it's why I'm so happy to have this opportunity to be on on, on your show to say what I have to say, and and hopefully people will will go to my site and read that that short book that I've written and some of the other things that I've written. I mean, even that book I wrote it a year ago. And it was really an effort to, I just, to me, all this stuff just makes sense. It's just, it, it's, and, and, and so I wanted to sort of capture it in a way that was really easy to understand. That also gave hope to people, again, because of the times that we're living in and how frightening some of the stuff that's going on is, the wars and things. And fear is, fear blocks our connection to source. And so the more that people are in fear, the, the harder it is for this shift, this rise in vibration to happen. That said, it will happen. It, it, it has to do with cycles of the earth. You know, there's a 26,000 year cycle of the earth's, of the wobble of the earth's axis that, that this is tied to. And so sort of the, the position of the earth relative to the sun and the position of our solar system relative to the center of the galaxy has something to do with essentially we're being bombarded with a tsunami of subtle energies that are lifting people up, but also polarizing us. It's fascinating how you're giving the natural causes 
that contribute to human evolution. Mm. There's so much interesting going on from a metaphysical perspective. Oh, exactly. And I'm also quite certain that the stuff that I'm experiencing is DNA activating. It's other parts of my DNA activating. And this hasn't been discovered by science yet, but we have... We have 24 pairs of chromosomes, not 23, and the 24th is in another dimension. And so that will be discovered, hopefully soon. It'll be massively eye-opening for things that they didn't know were there before, seeing, essentially seeing the quantum field. Um, so, Well, I have just a couple more quick questions for you if you have time. Yes. The first is... You've seen, I don't know if it's a vision or if it's just information that you've been given about what the world is going to look like once we get this shift. Are there any details of that that you could share with people? Well, yes, and, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not so much of a vision. I mean, I have a view of where it is going, if, if you will. And again, it's, I'm, it is, it's, cosmic alignments and physics that, but if you can imagine, I said to you earlier, like there's going to be a time where literally everyone on the planet is biased in service to others. And it's not hard. It's not a hard thought experiment to think about, to imagine if we took all of the energy that we put into conflict and we put that into creation instead, Which isn't to say that everyone's always going to agree and all that stuff. There's, even though, you know, as I said, the the light has won. We are assured to finish as a fourth density positive polarity planet. But even within that, there are, you know, different timelines that, that we can choose. The amount of technology, the way that we use technology is it technology embedded in human forms or not? Or to what degree do we? How quickly do we heal the planet? And, you know, what sorts of technologies do we create so that we don't harm the planet any, anymore? Everything, as we rise in vibration, you know, we're rising into higher vibration, but we're also rising out of lower vibration. And so part of this is letting go of things. And part of it is aligning to, to the higher vibration, to the higher vibrational state. And that's happening individually, collectively, but also for systems and institutions. Everything will have to align itself to the higher vibration. As we rise, it also, as there's more light on the planet, the darkness is shown. We, the, the stuff is exposed so that we can collectively deal with it. And so as systems and institutions rise, if there's too much corruption, throughout them, they will fall, you know, but not everything will have to fall. A lot of things will be able to be, call it fixing the plane of the airplane while it's in the air. But that's sort of this, on a really big scale, that's going on everywhere. And it will take, I don't know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. I, I, I don't know how fast or slow it ultimately takes. Um, I'm just certain that where the end state is. Thank you, Chris. And my last question for you is, as somebody who's helped ascending planets several times, do you have any practical tips for people on how we can help this process along on an individual level? Well, yes. And it's actually the book I wrote is precisely that. What you can do in your own life to live in a way that you are not only helping yourself, but also contributing to the greater shift overall. It's, you know, it's so important to, to take care of yourself and to bring yourself into balance. Because when you do that yourself individually, you also are doing it on behalf of the collective, right? And again, everyone on the planet individually is being brought into balance, even though it doesn't look like it right now. That is basically what's happening whether or not they are allowing it or resisting it is another matter. But the, the book that I wrote, it's called Repurposes of the Soul or 
Why on Earth Would I Incarnate on Earth is, is free for download at my site, purposeofthesoul.com. And when I say it's free, it's absolutely free. I don't even ask for your email address. You just click a button and hopefully that will be helpful for, you know, many people. I truly hope it will be. Chris, thank you so much for offering your book for free. And I will have that link in the description so people can easily find that. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about where people can find you or anything else you have going on? No, I don't think there's anything else to add. The site that I put up is very new. There's not a lot of material on it right now, but I will add to it in time. And and I would just encourage everyone to spend some amount of time every single day connecting to their own inner divinity and finding that and and connecting to their own Again, they have built in divine guidance and to learn to listen to it. Chris, thank you so much for being willing to share your story. I feel really honored that you wanted to share on my podcast. And I've really, truly enjoyed connecting with you. Oh, well, thank you so much, Melissa. I really appreciate you having me on. And I, I loved our conversation. So thank you. Thank you for watching and listening. Your views, likes, comments, and shares truly make the biggest difference in supporting this channel. Don't forget to check the show notes for all the links to today's guest, as well as my links. You'll find me on social media at Love Cover Life, my website, lovecoverlife.com, and the Be A Guest link for anybody who would like to be a guest on the channel. I have great news. Love Cover Life podcast is coming available on audio podcast. You can find it wherever you listen to your audio podcasts.